Welcome to the Raising Mom Podcast, a ministry of Coastal Church, hosted by mother and daughter Cheryl Coop and Jen Ennis. A roundtable conversation by moms for moms, where we keep it real, honest, and always focused on Jesus. Welcome to season four of Raising Mom. We are so excited to be back for season four. Can you believe it's been almost a year this Mother's Day that we launched Raising Mom and what a journey it's been. As we go into season four, we're really excited because we're going to be focusing all of our podcast episodes this season on a really special topic. One I think all of us moms can relate to, and that is women who changed the world. And so we're going to be covering uh, women in the Bible. We're going to be covering women who really had uh, left a legacy of faith throughout history for their children. And today's episode, we're excited to kick things off with none other than hero of the faith in a very real way, and that is Susanna Wesley. Mom, it's so great to be talking about Susanna Wesley with you and the legacy that she left for her kids and some of the principles that she instilled in her home. You know, one thing about um, being moms, we love to glean from other moms who have done things well. And even if it's uh, just one little portion of truth that we can pull out from someone else, it can change the way it can tweak. One tweak can change a lot of things in our homes. And Susanna Wesley is such a great example of, of a woman of God who brought up not just one or two kids. Can you believe it? She brought up 10. She was actually pregnant 19 times, wow. lost nine children, which in itself is such a tragedy. And for anyone that has has lost a child, whether it's through miscarriage or stillbirth or a child after it was born, it's devastating. And, uh, and she had that happen to her nine times. So I feel like she's a woman that we can look at and have 10 little ones or 10 kids running around you and keep life in some place of sanity. It's a great example to kick off someone who changed the world. And of course, she was the mom of two uh, famous men who really helped uh, their fathers of the faith. And that is John Wesley and Charles Wesley. We're not going to talk so much about the two of them, but we do want to talk about Susanna because she really believed that uh, the greatest community of believers to live together uh, in grace were those who lived under one roof in their own home. And so I think for all of us as moms to recognize that the community of believers God's given us to live in is our husbands and our children. And that, of course, we know this, that as much as we're raising our kids, God's raising us in, That's in, so as good. we raise. Yeah. In raising our kids. And so she really did look at it as her primary vocation being this to uh, to instill a clear pattern of Christian devotion into her children. And I don't think that's changed for any of us as moms who really want to have Jesus in the center of our homes. I think one of the things that I like the most about Susanna Wesley, or one of the things that inspires me the most about her is her discipline. She lived an incredibly disciplined life, despite the fact that she really did not live an easy life. Um, When her husband was away, and he was away often, I guess, um, (laughs) like that the substitute priest, she said, proved ineffective, which is kind of funny. She would be the one that would open her kitchen window and dozens would gather to hear her teach scripture. So she was kind of like, okay, guys, my husband's away. The priest isn't doing his job. So she just took it upon herself to be the one. Okay, well, then I'll teach the community. I'll rise up. I'll teach the scripture. If nobody else is going to do it, I'll do it. And that really kind of was the attitude of Susanna Wesley, whether it be in the way that she taught scripture, whether it be in the way that she raised her kids. She just really rose up to the challenge and she was very intentional. She lived with purpose and with discipline, even though she faced a lot of challenges. Yeah, she did, didn't she? And it it's good to look at other women who have faced challenges, at least for me, and I think for you too, Jan. It's when I when I read or when I, I listen to other women, I think, okay, if they can do it, I can do it too. Yeah. If God graced them, he can grace me. So if I ever get into a place where this is, seems too overwhelming, my li- life seems like there's too much going on, I love to go to a place where there's someone who has done something greater than I have because it gives me a place to say, whoa, I thought this was hard, but 
there, there, I can carry more by God's grace than what I think I can. And it's by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that really is what she, she looked, uh, she looked at. And I think to your point that her husband was away, um, seemed to be at least away quite a bit. She really rose up, um, in, in bringing up her children, in teaching them, in, in challenging them. And, uh, you know, I think of her, um, just the, the rules that she had. You know, it's interesting that one of her sons, when he was older, John, actually, John Wesley had asked her uh, and requested that she write in detail how she raised him and his eight siblings. I thought, wow, that's really powerful for an adult child to honor his mother and say, can you write out what were those principal rules that you had? Because you did a good job raising us. So what were some of those rules? And she did that. She actually uh, put those on paper and sent them to John. And one of the things was, was the importance of educating her kids. And I believe she homeschooled them. But over and above that, it was the mythology that she used. It was a regular method. And it was a regular method of living, not a, le- a regular method of teaching or a regular method of dis. It was just living. We're going to live this out. So I think of the scripture that in the book of James, not to be hearers only, but also doers. We're going to live this as a family. And so one of the things in just a really practical way is that she looked at things that they would be capable of that were age appropriate. Mm -hmm. So when they're really young, how about dressing and undressing themselves? Like when they're little, uh, changing their sheets, their bedding. Moms, if you are still changing the bedding of your kids, you know, that they're able to do it themselves. <laughs> you know, it really does come through. Much of what comes through with Susanna Wesley is not so much how amazing her kids were, but how disciplined she was, because it takes so much more work as a mom to yeah. do the training and to train them when they're young, instead of just saying, I'm just going to do it myself. Because oh, I love them, or they didn't get much sleep last night, or oh, they're tired, or oh, they were in school all week, or whatever our excuse would be. Be like, no, don't put your kids in those kind of places and do what they should be doing. I think I can relate to that in the season that I'm in. It is more work. And sometimes it's not like, oh, I want to give them a break. It's just easier for me to do it. It's easier for me to change the sheets. It's easier for me to do certain tasks because I'll get it done right. And I don't have to spend the time showing them how to do, showing them how to do it. Changing the sheets is a good one because I probably spent a frustrating amount of time internally. I didn't show it externally trying to teach one of our children how to put the corner on a sheet and it kept popping off. And that's a really <laughs> frustrating experience because you're like, I just could, I need to get this done. I want to move on to something else, but taking the time to teach them how to do a task on their own. And Susanna Wesley did that. She obviously was disciplined herself enough. And man, it is it is hard sometimes because it is discipline on our part to teach and train our kids. And oftentimes, at least for me, I don't feel like it. So it's very much a choice of I am choosing to do this because I know in the long run, it will not only benefit them, it'll benefit our home, it'll benefit our family. And I think she understood that and um, she applied that. A changing Almost the sheets. Miraculously, she did. <laughs> Yeah. You know, it would have been tough. She didn't, she didn't have the sheets that didn't need to be ironed. She didn't have the sheets that could be thrown into a washer and then put into a dryer. And she could just tell her kids to go get them out of the dryer. These would have, uh, most likely would have been done, you know, she lived in the 1700s. So these would have been done by hand. They would have been squeezed out by hand. Um, you know, when we were first married, Jen, uh, you know, your dad was a student and I was putting him through school and the apartment, we found a great apartment, but it did not have a washing machine in it, had an electric dryer, but it didn't have a washing machine. And your great aunt was moving out of her place. And she said, you know, I still have the ringer washer from when, um, you know, like when your dad was little, I have it at my house. It's just in the basement. Do you want it? And we were not at a place to put any money towards a washing machine. So we were like, hey, this is better than going to the laundromat. So yeah, we're going to take it. I had never... 
<laughs> well, you know what it was? It was a great discipline for me because I had never, I'd never used a ringer washer. Oh my goodness. I didn't even know how to use it. But, and it was a lot of work. And there was only two of us. And to thinking of sheets, doing those sheets every Saturday morning in that ringer washer. And the nice thing about it is that, you know, like you could put it on, you know, you plug it in, it's electric, you plug it in and that ringer could go, you could have that wash cycle go for an hour. It's just going to keep going and washing until I could get down there. And then you have to put it through the ringer into a bucket of water because the rinse water, and then you have to put it through the ringer again to rinse out the rinse water before it can go in the dryer. It was a long process. So I think of Susanna Wesley on how she did that with, you know, 10 kids in the household and diapers, right? Hot diapers. Hot diapers. She didn't have diapers. No. And so she didn't even have a ringer washer. And so the fact that she has for her kids, this, no, you're going to be a participant in this workload of what we're doing, I think is pretty cool. And one of the other things that, oh, sorry, you were going to share something about that. Oh, I have a question about that because I feel like in today's culture, so Susanna Wesley lived in the 1700s, a very different world. I think back then my media thought was, yes, you have 10 kids. Everybody has a job to pitch in and help around the house because that's, that was just kind of the culture. Whereas today, I don't think it's quite the same in our culture anymore where it's like you kind of have kids to help you with tasks. I think of farming, for example, farming culture was, you know, the boys always, you have boys so that they can help you manage the workload. I don't think families are seen that way anymore where we have kids to help manage workloads. It's almost like, I think what ends up happening, and this probably comes into play with the discipline of teaching and training our kids, is it's very easy to slip into this mode in today's world where as parents, your world now revolves around the kid's life and what they do and their activities. And it's not so much about them contributing. And I'm not saying this for every family. I just think society as a whole, it's not so much about kids contributing to home life and pulling their weight and teaching them how to do that. And so I think there's this, this age old discipline that is, there's something to it. There's something to what Susanna Wesley did. And that doesn't mean that can't, it it needs to look like 17, whatever it can look like 2021. But I think there's something to the principle of teaching and disciplining and saying to your kids, my world doesn't revolve around you. And in a family, this is what we do. You know, and Jen, that is such a good point. Of course, you're absolutely right, because we're not in this the 1700s and our families do look different. I think to your point, going back to the first thing that we said about her, that she considered her home to be that small community of believers that would live together in grace. So whatever that looks like for her with 10 kids, it was like, hey, we all have a position in this community. We all have, we all have responsibilities in this community. I'm overseeing those responsibilities and your job is to come alongside, receive the training and the honor that is due, which obviously came, otherwise John wouldn't have asked her to write it all out so that he could share it, um, what they were capable of. So be in that community. It's the community of responsibility. Often, I think in today's world, with with the way we're in society right now, it's like mom takes on way too much. I feel like mom is shouldering everything, and and dads, but I'm saying parenting overall. And I I know I'm making a very blanket statement here, but I think we need to, as a society, bring more responsibility into our kids' lives because I think it validates them. It helps train them. They they are not only are capable, but I really think actually kids want to because they prove themselves. We all love to be, we all love to prove to do something that we that is new, that's fresh and conquer that. And our children are the same way. You know, it's it's even the small things that we can help them with. So like the sheets and changing them. And teaching them and training them to do it and doing the discipline on our part to, to instill that. It actually builds confidence in our kids. So when they learn to do something like that, like changing the sheets, taking out the garbage, 
um, managing household chores. Recently, we just said, we're going to teach Jake how to mow the lawn. He's old enough to start learning how to do that. And what it does is it instills a sense of confidence in our kids so that when they're faced with challenges or you know, difficult tasks, whether it be in school or on a sports team or, you know, in music lessons, whatever it is, they think I can do this. Like I mm-hmm. can do hard things. I can do a challenge. It's a challenge, but I could do it. And I think that's part of what Susanna Wesley was training her kids in. And part of the reason why so many of her kids went on to be successful. You know, I love what Charles Wesley, her son said, he said, I learned more Um, what did he say? He said about her, he said, I learned more about God from my mother than from all the theologians in England. So that's a pretty powerful statement from somebody like Charles Wesley. So she did a good job and they learned from her, but it also set them up for success because they learned how to be disciplined in tasks and they learned how to carry responsibility within the home and it allowed them to be successful. And I think the same principle applies today is that as we teach and train, pray over our kids, teach them God's word. Oh my goodness. I thought when I became a parent before I had kids, I thought that's going to be so easy. I love Jesus. That's just going to naturally happen. I had no idea how much work it would be for me to teach my kids God's word. That just doesn't come. um, Yes, they catch it. They see me doing it but to teach them the discipline of doing daily devotions. It's discipline for me to help them get that discipline to say, guys, we're going to sit down. We're going to read the proverb of the day today. Have you read your devotional book? Come on. We're going to pray about that. I don't feel like praying. Nope. We're going to tell God, this is how we pray, man. Teaching them that is so much work. And sometimes it's so much easier for me. And I feel like just being like, whatever, I'll just pray for you. Like using that, whether it's a chore, even teaching uh, spiritual disciplines that happened last night, where I said to the older boys, hey guys, I want you to pray first. I want you to thank God for the day. I want you to pray for something. And one of the children was like, I don't have anything to say. So then it's taking a moment to say, here's how we pray. This is what you can say to the Lord, even when you don't know what to say. And not that I would force it on him, but teaching him and training him how to do that when it would have been easier for me to be like, okay, whatever, I'll just pray for you guys. So she did that. She instilled that in them. And a lot of that comes back to what we said at the beginning. It is we ourselves having to be disciplined to do that. Yeah, it's hard. It's, it's true. So moving on to going her going from a practical, she was a practical disciplinarian, including teaching, not just her home, but to your point, she also would open her kitchen windows and basically have church. Hey, it would be like COVID right now if that even the community around her wanted to hear what she had to say. So she also had a good name in the community. Others recognized um, the the uh, power of her words and, and the woman that she was um, because... It certainly wasn't because of her circumstances, because no. she she endured a lot of grief. She endured poverty. You know, her husband, you know, being in prison, like you said, for debt. Um, she had her own physical ailments. Um, so she had a lot her of house other... burned down? Yeah. And she almost lost one of her sons in the fire. In the fire? Yeah. And so there, I mean, there was a lot of things John that Wesley. happened. Oh. John Wesley. Like, what? where would Christianity be? theology without John Wesley and he almost died in the fire. Yeah. Yeah. So as a spiritual guide, she also purposed to your point to be that theological mentor to them. And that's what you did yesterday, last night with your boys, where you could have said, Oh, I'll just, I'm just going to pray. It's like, no, it's taking the time and say, okay, let's, let's look at some of the things and asking the questions. Uh, one thing that really convicted me going through really studying Susanna Wesley was this. I give answers too quickly to the questions instead of quest being the questioner. Mm-hmm. You can teach a lot by qu- asking questions. What do you think about this, Jen? How do you do this? Or how do you feel God was working in this particular scripture? Or why do you think God said that in the Bible? Why do you think he allowed that to be in the Bible? Well, how do you see that happening? And asking those questions to our kids rather than giving them the answer. I'm quick to give answers. I could be quicker to ask questions. Wow. And again, that goes back when I think that, okay, when I ask questions, then you're committing your time to really like listening and talking through it. Sometimes it's easier for me to just give an answer because then it's done and I can move on but they don't always retain that. And I think of when people ask me guided questions to help me come to a conclusion, 
how much I appreciate that and how much more I learn even from my own responses. And sometimes I respond in a way to a, like a guided question like that and realize, oh, wait, that's not right. And so if I need that, my kids definitely need that. And Susanna did that. She seems like a very amazing woman. And, you know, going back to what you said before, she had a great reputation in the community. And that really shows, you know, kind of who she was, especially because her circumstances wouldn't have given her the pedestal for a good name. You know, um, even the embarrassment of her husband being in jail for debt, um, you know, her poverty situation. She didn't kind of have all this stuff, yet she rose above and obviously had a very good name. Yeah, because of her character. So good, Jan, you know, and um, I, I think in, to your point that she really encouraged her kids in, in despite the circumstances to live what she called practical divinity. In other words, like just live out your faith and and also reason together. You know, it reminds me of a verse in closing in, in Isaiah 43, verse 26. God says this. He says, put me in remembrance. Uh, let us contend together. Or he's, another translation says, let us reason together. State your case that you may be acquitted. Here's God who knows everything. Think of you as a parent in comparison to your children. You know so much more than what your kids... Yeah, sorry about that. You know so much more than what your kids know, right? And yet being like thinking of like God the Father saying, I still want you to contend. I still want you to reason together. I still want you to be thinking through why it is so meaningful to you because I will prove you right. I will prove myself right as you as I reveal that to you. And so as parents, let's give our kids more opportunity to ask uh, to reason for us to give opportunity to ask more questions and to bring them along on this on this practical divinity ride in our home. I love that. Moms, we want to pray for you today, wherever you are, wherever you're listening, whether you're folding laundry, cooking dinner, going for a run. We want to pray for you that God would equip you, empower you by his spirit to be the mom of discipline to teach and train your kids the way that he wants you to. And I think the way that you want to as well, mom, would you pray? I would love to God. I'm so grateful for uh, examples that you have left us and people that would have the, the foresight to write them down and for a son to ask his mom, Hey, tell me some of these points so that I can write them down and I can pass them on. God, we learn from them. We learn from your word. We learn from each other. And for every home, every mom that is listening, the divine school that she is, that is, she is a partaker of in her own home, uh, that, that divine community, I ask God that there would, she would be empowered today. She'd be encouraged today to take another step forward and that she would be met with grace in Jesus name. Amen. Hey, we want to hear your questions. If you have a question that you would like us to discuss on the next episode, please follow us on Instagram, send us a private message, and we'll be sure to include your question in another episode. Thank you for listening to this episode of Raising Mom, a ministry of Coastal Church. Remember to hit that subscribe button so that you never miss an episode. Follow us on Instagram at Raising Mom Podcast to connect with a community of like-minded moms. To learn more about who we are and what we do, pop on over to coastalchurch.org.